Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This will be the first video of the Classic Mini Survival Guide series. And I wanted to start by just doing a quick identification guide between the A-series motor here on the left and the A-plus on the right. And I'm going to cover a few areas, mostly alternator or generator mount, um, clamp style for a distributor, and uh, finally just uh, general block casting differences so that you can quickly and easily figure out what, what you have in your car because both of these motors will fit into any of the minis. It's just a matter of uh, how it attaches to the gearbox, what gearbox and subframe, but uh, generally you can find either one of these in any car. But what we're going to do is just identify what you have, you know, A versus A plus, and then that'll allow you to get parts and accessories and whatever else you need to order. But um, we're just going to start with a general identification. So first up is generator versus alternator mount, and I'll go ahead and get closer for that. So the first engine here on the left, the green one, it's an A-series motor. I know that because its mounting position for the generator is six inches away from the water pump flange because this is the generator and it mounts here. Now, Later cars might actually have an alternator here, but they'll have a different style mount. So this is the style mount that typically came on these motors. Um, but later on, they actually did mount alternators to the car. I'll show you on my uh, my red mini. It's got this. It's got an alternator, but it still uses the uh, generator attachment plates. Like I said earlier, this is the style mount to use an alternator on an A series motor. And again, this is a A127 alternator mounted to an A series motor. By comparison, we have the A plus motor and the mounting distance it is uh, approximately four inches from the mounting holes to the water pump flange. And once again, this engine was designed to always run an alternator. So here's the generator by comparison and there's no way to attach it. So that's the first way you can identify which, which motor is which based on, on the position of this mounting lug. All right, next up, second e easiest way to identify an A-series motor is distributor clamp. Now, you'll notice this one is a pinch style. It's got the two bolts here. This is designed to fit the A-series distributor, and the distributor itself has the clamp attaching here. So here's the, uh, here's the clamp, and it fits onto that, that position. Now, the A-plus motor is different. So here's the A-plus motor. It uses this style of clamp to hold down the distributor. And the distributor, the flange here is different, so the clamp goes over the top like that to hold it down. Also in view are the extra ribs that were cast into this block for reinforcement. You can see particularly over in this region as well. Uh, they're also on the back side. And here on the A-series, this is all smooth, so um, no extra reinforcement ribs. So those are three easy ways to tell these motors apart. So naturally, the next question is, how do I identify the size of the engine once you've identified which series it is? And I'll give you a couple little quick tips on, on identifying based on head, which isn't 100% accurate because you can fit large bore heads on small bore engines. But as a general rule, this will get you close. So with this A-series motor, I know this is a 1275 engine because I can stick my finger between the thermostat housing and the valve cover. The 1275 heads have a larger section here cast into the side for the thermostat housing than the uh, small bore motors. As you can see here on the 998, I can't even fit my finger here. This is a 998 or small bore motor. Here we are looking at the back side of the A plus 998 motor and you see it has these black covers here. These are covers for the tappet covers. The, uh, the 998 A plus motors kept the tappet covers until the end of production. So that's one easy way of identifying a 998 small bore off an A plus. Now earlier A series motor do and do not have these covers depending on the vintage of the motor but in generally speaking the A plus 
uh, kept these mo covers for all of their, uh, their small bore engines. And here we have an A-series block. This one does not have the tappet covers on the back, as you can see here. It also does not have the ribs that were running across the backside of the A-plus block. So this is another easy way of identifying the motor from the backside. But once again, this is not 100% accurate because there are A-plus blocks that have tappet covers, but there are also A-series blocks that have tappet covers as well. So don't just use tappet covers as a way of identifying the block because there are there are tappet covered A series motors. This one just happens to be a non tappet cover A series motor. Also, while we're on the uh, path of identifying stuff, this is the pre Virto style clutch lever arm. This is how you identify a pre Virto clutch assembly with this long lever arm. And on the A plus motor, we have a Virto style clutch assembly with the short throw out arm here. So once again, just a quick and easy way of identifying what you have on your motor. So that's basically it. Uh, just a quick and dirty way of identifying your engine. Hopefully it helps you when you're ordering parts and uh, doing your repair work. I know that when I first started owning a Mini, I didn't know what was what way back when. But um, like I said, hopefully this helps you with your car and uh, you know, like perhaps if you're at a swap meet or you're at a you know you're buying a used engine from someone and you're trying to make sure that it fits and and is accurate well at least this helps you in your path forward now obviously there's a lot of testing that can be done for you know used engines and obviously you know if you buy a used car or something you can test it beforehand so i'll do some some compression and leak down tests on on both of these to kind of show you differences in that technique but uh for now this this guide is just a how to identify what you've got. So if you guys found that useful or interesting, let me know in the comments below. And once again, if you have suggestions on another video, perhaps you want to see something more specific, again, type them in the comments. But uh, for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.